Our song we start with this morning invites the faithful to come. My question is, can I come too? Let's stand and sing 249, all three verses. <clears throat> Come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the king of angels. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Exaltation, ye bright hosts of heaven above. Glory to God, oh glory in the highest. Oh come, let us adore him. Oh come, let us adore him. Oh come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord. Yea, Lord, we greet thee. Born this happy morning, Jesus, to thee be all glory given. Word of the Father, now in flesh of Come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord. Thank you, Father, for letting me come. Thank you for inviting each of us to come. We are ever so grateful. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's turn to 245. O come, O come, Emmanuel. And let us sing verses 1, 3, and 4. I particularly appreciate verse 4, which names Jesus as the desire of nations. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Verses 1, 2, and 4. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here. Until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, O day spring, come and cheer our spirits by thine advent here. 
disperse the gloomy clouds of night, and death's dark shadows put to flight. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to of nations bind all feet heart and mind bid envy strife and quarrel cease the whole world heaven's peace rejoice rejoice Let's meet and greet each other. Well, I could stand all morning up here and just watch you fellowship, but I guess I need to interrupt just so that we can get going. Um, it really is fun to fellowship with one another, especially during this Christmas season, because our fellowship is real because of Jesus. And we're truly brothers and sisters in the Lord, and it's just so much fun to be together. Um, if you're visiting with us today, I just want to say welcome. It's great to have you, and I just... Trust that you will be blessed by the Christmas program and the work that our kids and uh, our young people have put into it. Several announcements that I would just like to let you know of. Um, Barb Clipperton's mother fell on Tuesday and broke her hip. That is Maury's mother-in-law and it, Elaine Strum. And she had surgery this week, but she is way up there in age and Please be praying because the outcome of everything is still kind of hanging in, in the balance. And so uh, much of her family has been visiting her. She is in recovery. Uh, she's out of intensive care, but there, she, there's a lot of recovery that has to take place, a lot of healing. And so please uh, uphold her, Elaine Strom, but also her family in prayer during this time. Uh, Gene Elvijam is recovering. He's back in town and uh, just keep him in your prayers. Um, the young people had an opportunity to go Christmas caroling. It was mainly young people on Friday night, but families also, Chris and Eva. Um, Scogans, Cameo, do you want to just give a little report? Oh, right here, come on up. <clears throat> 
Yes, we did go caroling. Um, there was 19 of us, I believe. I could be wrong. I could have lost some kids somewhere. Um, but Merry Christmas. First of all, Merry Christmas. It's the only time of the year that we can outrightly say that, and people will either respond back with Merry Christmas or, or yeah. How many of you have gotten the yeah back? Or, yeah, have a good day? Or Isn't it sad that people don't return that Merry Christmas? I mean, this is the most fun time of the year, and the whole world separ- celebrates it. So don't be afraid to shout from the rooftops, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you, Maury. <laughs> So um, I think my favorite part of caroling the other night was when we did go to Gene Elvigem because he is a man of God, and um, we prayed with him, but then without even batting an eye, he prayed with us, and he prayed for your children. He prayed for your grandchildren. He said, bless these kids. And so um, as the youth leaders, we want to see more of the older generation, so I think we're going to try to go singing more than just at Christmas because it was just such a huge blessing to go out and um, just touch them in that little little way. And I know um, Shirley was there. Did you enjoy our singing? Yes? Okay. <laughs> Good to know. Good to know. Yeah. So um, tonight at our house at 3, um, we're going to meet at the loft at 3, actually, for the youth group, and we're going to go up to our house and aisle. Kids need skates, warm clothes, and dry socks. Because I know after skating, all your socks are really wet, and I have a hardwood floor. And if you've seen hardwood floors with wet socks, it's just, it's just nasty. So, uh, and then Wednesday, um, the Isle Free Church is having an event with a puppeteer from Scotland. His name is Mike Taylor. Um, there is a taco dinner at 5:30, and then um, the presentation is at 6:30, and it's a free event. Um, families, community, whoever wants to go. If there's enough youth that want to go. We will drive the van from the loft to take everyone up to aisle to be there at 5.30 for tacos. So, and then New Year's Eve at our house. Um, please come, bring goodies to share. It starts at 7, goes to whenever. We do some um, line dancing and circle dancing and stuff in our garage. So if anybody's interested in that, bring your dancing shoes. And uh, we'll bring in the New Year together. So thanks and Merry Christmas. Just a few more things. Um, Bill and Lene, you have a brand new grandbaby. Can you give us the details? Um, his name is Connor Dustin, and he was born Friday morning. He weighs seven pounds, five ounces, and he's going to be born Saturday morning. Um, and long. Congratulations. <laughs> Next Sunday is our Christmas Eve day service. We do not have Sunday school. Come at 10.30 for the service. It's going to be a very family Christmas Christmas oriented service and we would invite you to come here. Lots of special music and we're going to worship the Lord uh, in the Christmas spirit and I think you'll enjoy it very much next Sunday. And then I think the final announcement is following the service, uh, John and Sarah Nutt uh, have butchered a couple wonderful cows and they're willing to share the meat that they've had processed and so they're going to have bags of meat, frozen hamburger meat, and each family is welcome to, to pick up uh, one of those bags. And it's very nice of them to do. Last, and thank you. I'm going to ask the ushers to please come forward. Lord, we just want to say that we love you. And Lord, we truly worship you. God, thank you for your master plan of sending your son to this earth to be born in a manger. And uh, Lord, to grow up, to die on the cross for us so that we could literally experience your life within us. Take these offerings now, multiply them for your glory. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
Good evening. Sherlock Holmes here, and this is my trusty assistant, Watson, <coughs> and should. his wife, Mrs. Watson. <laughs> I shall tell Mr. MySpace you're here. Ah, Mr. MySpace, Sherlock Holmes is here. Good evening, Mr. Holmes. <laughs> Call me Sherlock, please. And this is my trusty assistant, Watson, and his wife, Mrs. Watson. <laughs> now, what's the urgent matter that you had called us out over the holidays? Well, that's just it. The matter is about the holidays. I don't understand, sir. It's, it's gone, missing. Someone has stolen it. Well, my holiday's certainly been stolen <laughs> since you had called us out here over the holidays just because you don't get days off. No, no, no. Someone has stolen the meaning of the holidays. Someone has stolen the meaning of Christmas. <laughs> oh. I see. Yes, yes. I quite understand. That's a serious crime, a very serious crime indeed. Do you can help? Of course. I'm a detective. We shall investigate at once. Just let me know if there's anything you can, if there's anything I can do to help. Yeah, so let me see. Very strange, very strange. For <laughs> a <laughs> Christmas celebration and it's certainly quiet, what do you make of this, Holmes? Ah, uh, elementary, my dear Watson. <laughs> The family has been stolen. The only, not only is that a clue, but that solves the mystery behind the stolen meaning of Christmas. Ah, well, um, except I, I do have a family. You do? All here, in this house. You are a very fortunate man. This certainly does change things. Please summon everyone to this room. Of course. Butler, find the wife and children at once, please. I need everyone to be in this room. In that case, also call the cook and the children. Right away, Sam. Who are these people? <laughs> this, is this is Sherlock Holmes and Mr. and Mrs. Watson, now. Who? They're detectives, uh, They're here to help us find the missing meaning of Christmas. It's Christmas? Yes, sir. <laughs> See what I mean? It's completely gone. Do not fear, Mr. MySpace. You have hired the very best detectives in the whole world. We will find it afterwards. A crime has been committed in this very house. Someone has stolen the meaning of Christmas. We shall find, er, and it will be my job to find it. Who is this strange person, dear? This is Sherlock Holmes. And my very trusty assistant, Watson. And his wife, Mrs. Watson. <coughs> now, we shall begin the investigation. I shall ask that all of you remain in this room until the meaning of Christmas has been found and mystery solved. You suspect it is one of us? So I suspect it is you? Not at all. Do you have the meaning of Christmas in your possession right now? Not at this very moment. So you admit that you took it and then hid it? <laughs> I have hidden nothing, in fact. For a long time now, I have been planning. So you admit that you have the meaning of Christmas? Of course. And you say you have been planning this crime for quite some time? Why? Why? <laughs> Why would you take the meaning of Christmas from us? <laughs> no. Yes. No. Which is it, Mrs. MySpace? Well, what do you mean? I have been planning a party, not a crime, and I was planning on giving it back. I'm throwing a party tonight, so if you could speed this along. Why, so you can get away with the crime? No, no, I just want everything to be perfect and right on time. And when does the meaning of Christmas come in? That's it. It's a party. The, par the meaning of Christmas is the party? Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's not it. That's not it at all. Not that you don't throw great parties here. She really does, you know. But you throw parties all the time. So, if you throw parties all year long, then how can meaning of Christmas be parties? The Christmas party has a Christmas theme with Christmas food. Food? What kind of food? It's the cook. He's responsible. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Aha, a clue, some sort of food. <laughs> Figgy pudding? It's gravy, sir. Turkey gravy. Then you must be the cook. It is as you say, sir. Did you steal the meaning of Christmas? Not at all, sir. I just follow directions and mix stuff up to make food, sir. Where do you get this stuff? <laughs> at the store. Hmm. So for these Christmas parties, what sort of food do you <coughs> make? 
turkey gravy from the turkey. Turkey. <laughs> potato. Ah, potatoes, yams, lots of baked goods. <laughs> If you don't mind me saying, this sounds a lot like Thanksgiving. <laughs> it, it pretty much is the same thing. Hmm, I see. So if you say the same, that you don't have the main of Christmas in your possession? Not at all, sir. I don't think there's even a recipe for that. It's just food, sir. And you. <gasps> what is it that you do? I am the chauffeur. I drive. I drive cars. And I drive people around in those cars. What does Christmas mean to you? I would say going places. <laughs> what kind of places? Interesting places. Parks, concerts, churches. Churches? Is that just for Christmas? Uh, no. I bring people to churches other times of the year um, for lots of different things. The park, though. The park only has lights on the trees during the Christmas season. Perhaps you took... I mean, a Christmas for a ride to a park and just left it there. No, I don't think I have ever had the meaning of Christmas in one of my cars. <laughs> and you, besides answering the door, what do you, do you have to do with Christmas? I'm the butler. I clean things as I do other times of the year. I do help decorate, though. Would you then say that you have the meaning of Christmas in your possession? The Christmas decorations are different from the other decorations from other times of the year, so they have a special meaning to Christmas. Uh-huh. Mrs. MySpace always has to have the house decked out. It always has to sparkle, glitter, and look festive. <laughs> hmm. And it does. Very nice job. But is it all here? Is there anything missing that is usually here for our Christmases? Everything looks the same as it did at this time last year. What does Christmas mean to you? Toys, candy, theme songs, no school. Do you enjoy these things at other times of year? Twins and our birthday. Twins and our birthday, you can't get Easter. Sing songs at school. No school at Easter or in the summer. So nothing unusual there then. When I first got here, why didn't we ask Mr. Myspace what he thought Christmas was? So then we could recognize it. My dear Watson, brilliant, brilliant, I say. Since you noticed that the meaning of Christmas was gone, what is the meaning of Christmas? Ah, well, um... <coughs> I, uh... For the past few years, I had begun to think it was all just about spending lots of money. I don't really know. I guess it was just different when I was growing up. Yeah, when I was little, what was different about our Christmas? Yes, what does Christmas mean to you? Traditions. Traditions? What kind of traditions? Well, we would read from the Bible. Bible? We have a Bible. That's brilliant again. <laughs> yes, indeed, elementary. <laughs> now, what? Did you read the entire book? <laughs> we would read, I don't quite remember now. Uh, I think it was the beginning of that new part. <laughs> Do you mean the New Testament? Yes, that sounds right. I've forgotten, it's been so long. The generations of Jesus Christ, the son of David. Oh, I remember. David was the king of Israel. So as Jesus Christ was in line with king, go on, Mrs. Watson. <coughs> it's very intriguing. Yes, please go on. Ah, David, the son of Abraham. And he goes on to list all the fathers and sons. And the son of Jacob was Joseph, the husband of Mary, who gave birth to Jesus, whose name is Christ. Ah, now here in the book of Matthew, chapter 1, verses 18 through 23. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was in its way, in this way, when his 
mother Mary was going to be married to Joseph before they came together, the discovery was made that she was with child by the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her husband, being an upright man and not desiring to make her public example, had a mind to put her away privately. But when he was giving thought to these things, an angel of the Lord came to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, have no fear of taking Mary as your wife, because that is which is in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will give birth to a son, and you will give him the name Jesus, for he will give his people salvation from all their sins. Now all of this took place so that the word of the Lord by the prophet might come true. See, the virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will give him the name Emmanuel, that is, God with us. As I suspected all along, the meaning of Christmas was not stolen, it was just misplaced. Amazing, there is the meaning of Christmas. A long, long time ago, just as God foretold the mankind in the Old Testament, God came to save us. God came as a baby for a reason, and Christmas is meant to celebrate this. <laughs> It's not just about a baby being born, it's the whole meaning behind this birth. What a great theme for a party! A great party in honor of Jesus. Do we still get gifts? Giving gifts is just a tiny symbol, but coming to earth, God gave us the greatest gift ever. No one could ever steal the meaning of Christmas from us, and we certainly won't misplace it ever again. Then our job here is done. Thank you, Mr. Or, thank you, Holmes and Mr. and Mrs. Watson. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. MySpace, by asking me here, I was able to make this discovery through. Thank you, indeed. Yes. Excuse me, I was going to turn you on of the oven before it burns. <laughs> why, why don't you two join us for a Christmas summer? We have plenty enough to share. That's most gracious of you. All of you, to the kitchen, immediately. <laughs>
a child is born He shall reign In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child. After they had registered, they had went to find a room at the inn. Yeah. 
While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. They hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what they had been told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told.
after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born to the king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. From there they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. <laughs> the wise men saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. This took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, the virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means
Jesus' name, and all God's people. Lord bless you.